Chapter 18 It had been some time since he'd gone out onto the balcony at home and gazed at the night sky. Even from a hundred yards above, he could tell that no ripples disturbed the black surface of the bay. It was a hot, windless evening. The humidity bathed him where he stood. He saw the sky differently this evening. He couldn't help but do so after everything Amano had told him this afternoon about the contents of the loop. As a child, so full of the desire to understand the universe, he'd stared at the glittering stars with a passion born of the feeling that if he just looked long enough, he'd understand. What's at the end of the universe? That was the kind of naive question that had presented itself to him. Staring at the cosmos now, it was utterly beyond his imagination what might lie outside the universe. Kaudu tried to imagine himself as a denizen of the loop. Assuming he were a being aware of time and space, how would he interpret that universe? It would most likely appear to be expanding. The loop had gradually grown without changing the passage of time. Before the program had been started, there had been nothing there at all. A mountain of silicon chips, yes, but no time, no space. But from the moment the staff had started the program, space had grown at an explosive rate. The Big Bang. The loop's space did not exist within the massively parallel supercomputers enshrined beneath the ground, just as a nature scene on a movie's screen was not actually contained within that screen. The space existed neither inside nor outside the computers. It was only experienced as space by beings able to recognize it as such. As life forms evolved and their awareness grew, that space must have expanded, as if fleeing before the eyes that sought to recognize it. Kaudu turned his eyes to the actual sky. The universe he was looking at was expanding, but he wondered suddenly if it wasn't simply trying to get far away from earthly DNA and its powers of recognition. He couldn't discard the possibility that the real universe was a hypothetical space just like the loop. Would that interpretation cause any inconvenient problems? No, it wouldn't. In fact, he felt that regarding the real world as a hypothetical space was getting closer to the truth. Maybe the ancient ways of thinking, the Buddhist idea that form is emptiness, or the Platonic notion of the ideal world, did a better job of capturing the reality of things. And if one assumed the universe was a virtual space, then there was the possibility that it was being observed through an open window in space, just as humans had been able to peek into the loop world, make the right time and space adjustments, and images of a particular moment in a particular place would unfold on the monitor in 3D. Kaudu placed one hand on his other arm, then moved it to his chest, his belly, and below. Do I just think I have a body when really there's nothing at all? But there was that little organ located just below the center of his body, and there were desires which emanated from it. He couldn't believe those were without reality. As he touched it, stroked it, he thought of Reiko's face. There was nobody behind the glass door at his back. The television was showing something different from a while ago. His mother was probably shut in her room, absorbed in Native American myths. Kaudu glanced behind him, and then allowed his organ to tower in the direction of the window that might be there in space somewhere, allowed it to insist on his existence. Kaudu wanted to shout to the night sky, This flesh can't be a fictional construct. Reiko's body can't be a fictional construct.